Praxis Prepper. Hey everybody, this is Praxis and this behind me is my EDC or bug out bag. I've been carrying this around for some time. I, th I think it's a great way of just being prepared for all the little kind of bumps in the road that life throws at you. Uh, it, it, a real way of looking at a bug out bag or an EDC pack is kind of like a glorified mommy bag. You know, when I'm out with my boy, I've got all sorts of tools in there to help make his life better, make my life better. Whether it's like, I notice that his fingernails are too long or my fingernails are too long. I've got nail clippers in there. If he gets a scrape, I can, you know, put some Neosporin on it and put a bandage on it to make it so that, you know, he's okay. If I'm hungry and I want granola bars or even a lock picking kit or medicines in there, aspirin, ibuprofen, that kind of stuff, there's all sorts of stuff that I keep in my EDC bag that improves the quality of my life and makes it so that I, when I get the curveball thrown at me, it's not quite as bad. So I love the idea of having an EDC pack, but for some people who are interested in getting into it, there's kind of a cost uh, uh, prohibition against it. Like this pack right here, it was like uh, almost, a, it was right around a couple hundred dollars for that pack. And, uh, and a lot of the times, you know, you get what you pay for. There's a lot of garbagey backpacks out there that are going to fall apart, that don't have a lot of compartments, that are just kind of difficult to organize. Uh, so, you know, when I was buying my pack, I was like, okay, this is something that's going to be a big part of my life. I don't mind spending a couple hundred dollars. But, you know, for people that are just looking to get into it, uh, you know, that maybe don't have that much money, or certainly if you would like to kind of get people in your life that you care about into prepping and you thought maybe you could get them like kind of an EDC bag that they could put in their car for emergency situations. You know, you're not, well, unless you got a lot more money than I do, you're not going to be wanting to spend $200 alone just on the bag and then, you know, all the things that go into it. I've done videos about bug out bags before. I, I wasn't necessarily planning on doing this video right now, but I was asked to review a product and it's right here. It's the X Aegis EDC pack, and I decided to do a video on it because this thing is so inexpensive compared to you know what you could be spending. This pack here is forty dollars, and it's pretty good. It's got some downsides too, and I'm going to share those all with you. But this is a pretty good bag. This is the kind of bag if you had people, you know, not, not if you have like hundreds of people on your Christmas list, but if you had a few people on your Christmas list that you wanted to maybe get them into prepping, you want to uh, you know get something that they could you know, put in their car to have with them in an emergency situation to make their situation a little bit better, this could be a pretty good option for you. So I wanted to share it with you. I'm going to go through just some of the features on it. Again, some of the downsides on it. And, you know, just the fact that this has downsides, every bag has downsides. This one over here, I've had to add things to this. I, I put uh, sunglasses uh, on there. I mean, sunglasses are something that I think are really important uh, for an EDC kind of pack because, you know, if it's really bright, especially if like it's winter and there's just like sun glaring off all the snow and everything, you can give yourself a headache and get really uncomfortable. So sunglasses are something I think are kind of important to have on an EDC pack and there was nowhere to put them on this pack. Also this pack back here, and it's just really a problem with most, most of these smaller size backpacks, is that ergonomics were not thought of, I think. I, I think most people that design these kind of packs have never been extensively backpacking. And the idea of having like a frame structure inside. Now I'm a backpacker. I've gone out for like, you know, multi-day, you know, week plus sort of, uh, you know, excursions. And you want to have a backpack that has like a good frame structure and everything. Like th those are all things you see in backpacking backpacks. You rarely see them in these kind of backpacks. In fact, I've never seen them in these kind of backpacks. And whether you're spending $200 or $40, you know, these are both in that same kind of category where like, you know, the er ergonomics of these straps and everything on both these packs, they're not perfect. So I'm not going to like, you know, pick that, ki that kind of stuff apart too, too much. But what I do want to talk about with this pack is it just has a lot of, um, you know, storage options in it. And again, it's like so inexpensive. Uh, it's got uh, molly webbing all over the surface here, which is really, uh, you know, it's handy for adding things on. Like uh, this, this guy here has some molly webbing. I've just got bandanas tied to it. Uh, but if it had had um, more molly webbing, I think I probably would have attached these uh, sunglasses to a different part on this pack. Like I put them on here initially because this could attach to the molly webbing, but it just made the thing stick out way too far. Like uh, I, I, I will oftentimes fly with this in an airplane. Uh, you know, you can't fit it into the overhead compartment because they, they would just stick up too much. So I kind of mo mo moved that around and I ended up using hot glue to attach it. So having lots of molly options is great for customizing the thing later. This pack here just has a lot of those kind of options already built into it. It's got, you know, a small, uh, you know, section right at the top, which is great for the things you, you might want to grab a lot. Like if it's EDC, you might want to have your wallet and keys and all that kind of stuff in there. It's got this larger 
kind of opening right back here, which opens up that you could put all sorts of, uh, you know, you know, kind of flatter things in here. Yeah, you know, again, if it's like an EDC kind of thing, maybe you have, you know, things for work you want to be putting in there. Uh, it's sort of like your active area, and then the other stuff is a little bit deeper. That's the way that I, I work with this guy, is that there's, there's a layer of stuff that's like kind of my EDC. I carry all the time stuff, and then I have one pocket that I sort of add things, like whatever I'm doing on that kind of day. Uh, it has the, the large pack here, which I think is kind of designed for sort of like a laptop area, and you could put a laptop in here. But it, also, if you wanted to just have it be like general supplies, there's like an open cavity, and there's all, a pocket here, a pocket here that kind of closes up. So you've got a lot of storage available in there. Yeah, and again, this is a smaller pack, so when I say a lot of storage, I mean a lot of storage for like kind of a small uh, profile pack. There's little um, you know pockets on the side. This one looks like it might be good for... Um, uh, flashlight or even uh, possibly pepper spray if you were in a situation or, or like where that is legal and that, that might be something that you would want. Um, lots of Velcro kind of tie downs. This is sort of designed as sort of like a tackle bag um, but you know obviously you can adapt the use uh, you know away from that or to whatever you might want. One strange feature here is that there's a pocket on the bottom that uh, I, I was I was thinking you, it might be like a pass through. You could put something through like a like a a little bedroll or something, it, but it doesn't. It closes off on one side, but it just, it doesn't secure in any way. I really do not know what that is meant for, unless you like wanted to like leave a trail of breadcrumbs. <laughs> As you're going through the woods, you can put breadcrumbs in there and they'll slowly fall out. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Uh, and I, it, it didn't come with any literature or any explanation for what, you know, a, a number of these things were. So I'm just kind of guessing my way through. Um, here's one of the downsides of this is that uh, it has this side pocket and you see I've got a water bottle in there right now um, it's not the biggest side pocket and you know whenever you have any kind of EDC pack you know water is very important water is life you really need to have access to water and uh, I guess you could put a water bottle on the inside of this pack uh, but you know it's usually the kind of thing you want to have available on the outside kind of while you're going this is pretty small uh, like this water bottle here that's not a very big water bottle it doesn't even close up in there and you might be like oh, okay well it still fits but you know when you're hiking on the trail things like this you know, you can say goodbye to them. They're, they're very frequently going to fall out, especially like if this was full and like, you know, like you're hiking and, and like you kind of lean forward to claw, crawl over something, this kind of stuff can fall right out. So that's not really all that great unless you had a really, really t uh, tiny water bottle. But again, I don't want to be too harsh about this because this is, it's a $40 backpack and also it's kind of small. And, and I mean that in like a good way. You know, this pack here, it's, it gets sort of bulky. as an EDC pack that's kind of gratuitous. Uh, this kind of thing, uh, it's a little smaller uh, profile. It's easier to kind of throw around and fit in different places. When I walk around with that, it looks like I'm a guy with a reasonably large backpack on my back. If you had this on your back, you know, you'd have that kind of gray man kind of blend in sort of thing going on. And, um, you know, there, there's definitely something to be said for that. So uh, this, this would be, you know, like kind of a downside to it. Another downside uh, to it, and I said I wasn't going to pick on this too, too much, uh, because I think all of these packs, they tend to have ergonomics issues. Oh, oh, by the way, there's one, there's another place you can store stuff right underneath here. And I, I guess uh, you could maybe rigidize the, uh, the, uh, the inside of this a little bit if you put something kind of stiff in there. Uh, but one of the, one of the uh, ergonomic issues of this thing here is just, just this. The way that uh, it kind of goes around the neck, uh, the, uh, often those backpacks, they'll, they'll be a little bit wider and it'll kind of go around your neck. This one, it kind of rubs a little bit and I'm, I, I, get to, I tend to be a little bit persnickety when it comes to this area. If I get a lot of uh, uh, stress or pressure uh, from a pack on this part of me, on the tendons around my neck, it can give me a headache after I'm like hiking for a while. So I tend to be a little bit picky about that. If that's not an issue for you, I guess it's not an issue for you. But this particular pack, I feel it's like kind of tight up around the neck. And I'm not like a guy with a particularly like large beefy neck either. So uh, the fact that it's like a little bit tight on me, I'm kind of like, eh, you know, I don't know. But again, I, th I see this as being more of the kind of thing that it would be like, a present, you could pre-pack it with some things for somebody and you could say, you know, this is something you can keep in your car and if there's ever an emergency, it'll be there for you. And if you do that, I would highly suggest to put in things that people are actually going to use uh, on an ongoing basis. You know, think about like, you know, what that person, you know, needs and uh you know very frequently that could be like you know like some extra water or a little snack like something that's gonna 
uh, kind of, uh, you know, last for a while, like, a, you know, a packaged granola bar or something like that. Bandages are something that you can put in there. Again, you know, we could go all into, like, what's good in a bug-out bag. But, you know, if I were preloading this for someone that was new into prepping, uh, you know, I, I would skip probably skip the pe the pepper spray, um, you know, or the you know additional extra ammo, <laughs> you know, and all those kind of like you know standoffish kind of things that get people kind of thinking that preppers are a little crazy, you know. There's so many things uh, about preparedness that are just for everybody, you know, you know whatever it is, like you know maybe like a map of your area, a list of phone numbers of your family members, you know, people uh, have trouble like you know they they store all their phone numbers in their phone, and if they ever lose their phone, they don't. They don't know how to contact anyone. They could borrow someone else's phone, but they don't know anybody's number. So having like a list of phone numbers, those kind of like basic things, think about like the problems that people have, average people have on an average day, and, and, and create kind of a preparedness pack for that kind of stuff. You know, we don't all have to be preparing against aliens invading my air-dropping bird flu-infected clown zombies all the time. There are all sorts of average things that happen every day, and I think that's a great way of getting people into prepping and preparedness, is help them with problems that they actually have on an ongoing basis. You know, sure the financial markets are, you know, t unstable, and sure they may collapse someday, but you know, you, if you fixate on those kind of things, those sorts of things that happen very infrequently, a lot of people are gonna be like, well, that never happens. It's never happened in my lifetime. I don't need to worry about that, but I guarantee, They've been thirsty at some point. They've wanted gum at some point. They've wanted a breath mint at some point. All, I, I know that seems kind of silly, but if you start people down the road of preparedness by uh, prepping against the sort of the little hassles and issues that they have in their life, very likely they're going to start growing and be like, oh, you know, there's this other thing that happened to me once. I'd like to be prepared against that because that was kind of a pain in the ass. That's how I got into prepping. That's how a lot of people I know got into prepping. Just little things happen in your daily life that are irritating. You don't want to have happen again. And you like to make a little bit of a plan for it in the future. And a uh, EDC kind of pack is a great vehicle to help you with all those sorts of things. And again, this is one $40, it's very inexpensive. I think it's kind of like an entry level kind of thing. So if you're looking for a gift for somebody for this holiday season, consider this, maybe pre-packing it with a few different things, light that little fire under their butt, and then maybe someday they'll be teaching you some things. That's it, thanks for watching. This episode has been brought to you in part by Prescott Caliber Club and Jeske Defense Strategies. Prescott Caliber Club is a federally licensed firearm manufacturer and retail store specializing in firearms, survival gear, and producing great online content. If you want to thank them for supporting this channel, go check them out at prescottcalclub.com. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.